Hello, my dear audiences, my lovely friends. Welcome to the East West Show. For the past two and three weeks, we are so engaged in the subject that bad laws are killing California business. It is all because that uh, our legal system is being clogged up uh, due to frivolous lawsuits. Speaking of frivolous lawsuits, there are really, really laws that are making no sense. People, especially hungry people, especially hungry attorneys, what they call uh, call career plaintiffs, they're looking around for cases whereby they make money. And who suffers? The business owners. Who benefit? The lawyers. As for the plaintiff itself, the real plaintiff itself, barely the case, they get paid anything. It is a mess that people are taking advantage of that we decide at this show with GNE TV, with the uh, East West show, we want to get involved, we want to get uh, to, to stand for what we believe it is right. Today with me is another uh, wonderful individual, however, a unfortunate victim of the bad laws. That is Mr. Zach Hawav. Zach, welcome to the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Zach Hovav is a real estate broker and operator. He's the owner of his own business. Unfortunately, he has been sued heavily, facing a very, very deadly or bloody uh, case. So before we touch the case, can you please let us know something about yourself, please? Yes, I am a small real estate operator especially in the Inland Empire, San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, that's my area. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh -huh. an area which is uh, uh -huh. an area that's struggling financially, mm -hmm. uh, culturally, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of cases of um, people mm -hmm. that are then unemployed, at least at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, my properties needs a lot, a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get new tenants. And the, um, the case that I was sued, that was, uh, that's a that commercial property. Mm -hmm. And You run commercial property as well as residential? As well as residential. And how much are you uh, operating with? And I mean, under your management? Uh, basically, you know, I've got uh, a couple of a few buildings that are commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few properties that are residential, so it's mm -hmm. a mix. I see. But being a small operator, I manage them myself. I see. And attend to them. That's my livelihood. I see. I live of that. And as uh -huh. well as I have to cater to my tenants mm -hmm. who are basically running this business, small business owners that struggling to stay alive. Many of them in the area have Right, just right. gone away uh, because they couldn't sustain the economics, couldn't right. sustain general losses. And in other I words, you manage the property. The property provides the environment for other small business owners to operate their own money, exactly. to operate their own business. Exactly. Oh, very good. Okay. And the small businesses that are in the area, the businesses uh, that catering to the local community, each one is, like we say, mom and pop type uh, uh, businesses. Uh -huh. In my case, uh, I had a dentist. And how many years have you been doing this uh, operation? I would say over 20 years. Over 20 years. You have a family? Yes. And that's, and your, uh, own li uh, that's your only livelihood? That's correct. And how many uh, family members are you supporting? Basically, I have uh, three children. Mm -hmm. Now I have grandchildren. Children and grandchildren. And, uh, and your wife? My wife, of course, uh, I put, had to put my kids to college, mm -hmm. pay their uh, college uh, tuitions right. and mm -hmm. so forth. And at times, uh, especially with the last cycle of the economy, you know, financially, financial situation were very, very mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. You on one hand have to attend to your family, on the other hand you have to, have to attend to tenants, who vacancies are very high, people do not pay, and you really struggling very mm -hmm. hard just to maintain the business. I see. And then when the loss is dropped in, mm -hmm. that devastates a person. Mm, mostly, uh, it is the owner, the property owner that gets sued. In your case, when you get sued, what are you getting sued for? Uh, actually, those, let's call it scrupulous type uh, plaintiffs, 
including the lawyers. They're going after the tenant as well as the owner. Uh huh. So they always sue both, just in case of one is not the capable. The tenants and, and the, the owner. The owner. Uh huh. And that's their mode of operation. And where are you stand? Uh, I'm basically uh, been sued as an owner. My tenant, who is um, a dentist uh, of Asian descent, is a Korean guy, very, very nice mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he was sued, he didn't know what the lawsuit uh -huh. is. Very nice. What was the quote-unquote violation? That's c the plaintiff claimed that they tried to use the dental services, okay, the, the, my, uh, the services of the tenant, mm -hmm. and it didn't have, it had um, barriers for a disabled person, for him to be able to park. So uh -huh. basically they were saying there was no adequate parking uh -huh. for him to be able to use a service that which in reality was not, was a false. There was. Uh -huh. There was plenty of parking. There was a fake, the, the uh, marking were maybe faded a little bit, mm -hmm. but they were available. Mm -hmm. And normally we have no problem with parking, with parking any place. I see, I see, I see. So it's uh, kind of uh, sounds ADA related. It's an ADA related. American Disability Act. Correct. That law related, right? Exactly. Okay. Now to the parking, to the uh, dentist property, uh, altogether, how much of a parking space? How many spots? We have about under, I think we have under 50, 40 something. Under 50, 40. And under 50 um, parking spaces, mm -hmm. but that's shared with other tenants as well. Okay, all right, okay. Is it a very crowded area that it gets full, a full lot, full parking lot all the time? Um, I'm glad you asked this question. Actually, mm -hmm. we have a lot more than we needed because we not only have few tenants, but we have a high vacancy. We were mm -hmm. about 50% vacant uh -huh. in the whole bel building. So parking was uh, plentiful for anybody to come anytime during the day. I see. Seven days a week, we were always going to find parking. There was no uh -huh. problem of being crowded parking. So. The, the lawyer is suing you because you do not have a, a specific or a designated parking spot for the uh, disabled uh, person. Yeah, that's where right? the claim, which is, like I said, a mm -hmm. false claim. The biggest issue down here, I call those things drive-by shooting, quotation marks. Yeah, drive-by shooting, yes. These okay. people drive by a neighborhood, especially mm -hmm. in low income neighborhood, All right. minority owners, minority uh, tenants, and they just look at the parking lot or sometimes send somebody to take pictures or just drive by, don't even enter the property. They look for trouble. They're looking for places where they can say, got you. Mm. We, have a, we can file a lawsuit. We can send you I a see. threatening letter. Uh -huh. That's, in my opinion, this is a blackmail letter. Yeah, yeah, it's a blackmailing. Uh, on the premises, on the parking lot, is there a mark? Was there a mark? Or has there been a mark, blue mark of the uh, handicapped parking? Yes. Or it has, it, it, it is there. It is there. It has a it parking. There. It was faded. It, but it's it was only there. faded, not blue enough. Yes. Exactly the case. Yes. Exact case. All right. Last time I was with my friend. Mary Ann Maloney, you know her. Yes. Okay, we went to her event. All right, that's where we met. Right, we were talking about the signs not being blue enough, uh, and that becomes a uh, handle for lawsuit that people are, are are suing you for. And exactly for the purpose of today's show, I had an attorney visiting this uh, studio yesterday, a day before. Uh, I was typically asking from attorney's mouth. I want him to say, as attorney who is also trained to bite, right? Attorneys are like that kind of animals. They are trained to bite. You know what? According to him, quite to my surprise, they have a lesson. They have a lesson of a moral, a moral lesson. They even have to pass a moral test 
to make sure you're a qualified attorney. And he said, quote unquote, you may pass the bar, but you will not become attorney until or unless you pass the, the test of the, of the moral test. They call it moral right. test. Right. And then he says, there are career plaintiffs, career plaintiffs who are driving around looking for cases. Unfortunately, you just got the bullet. Am yeah. I right? I think you summed it, you said it very well. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the same lawyer that sued me, I was told so much time later, was talking to somebody he knows, a friend, and this is also a lawyer, and quote, that's what this person told me that was knowledgeable about the ADA suit filed by this attorney. Mm -hmm. And he said, the attorney defined this lawsuit as a lucrative business. A lucrative business. Just oh, right. in this word. Mm -hmm. Just to think about it, I'm getting emotional about is it. Is he talking about prostitution work? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is a prostitution. <laughs> I call it, some people call it financial terrorism. Uh-huh, okay. And those things are literally happening in the United States. Mm. When I was first aware of the possible lawsuit, because initially mm. Mm. Um, my tenant received a letter demanding a payment mm -hmm. by the, cli the client of mm -hmm. this lawyer, mm -hmm. claiming in simple uh, The quote-unquote plaintiff. Plaintiff. Mm -hmm. okay, claims that he is disabled paper, mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. And his letter stated in general terms mm -hmm. that his client was barred from being able to use the parking All or right. the services. Let's, uh, let's take a pause for a break. When we come back, we'll really find word by word what is that on the letter, the demanding letter, so, my, so that my audience might know what exactly uh, California is being hurt, being hit so much, and why our economy, why our small businesses suffer so much. Uh, with me today is my good friend, Zach Hovav. He is a small business owner. He is operator, uh, real estate operator manages properties being sued for something frivolous. I would say frivolously sued for something that's not even there to my eyes. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Hello, my lovely audience, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Californians. If you care about California, you really want to care about what's happening. You really want to listen to, to see what we're talking about today. With me is my good friend, Zach Hovav. He's a small business owner. He manages a real estate business, namely uh, some premises, uh, rental for industrial commercial uses. Uh, as well as uh, residential uses. Uh, in one situation, he was uh, sued. He has been sued. Still, he is still in it, uh, not off the hook yet, right? Uh, we have gone through about five, six years uh -huh. in the process. Six and years in the process uh, for a uh, uh, stinky lawsuit that all I can say, lucrative business, I don't know. That's a wrong term, right? <laughs> That's a wrong term. Sounds like prosecution already. Uh, well, we're sharing his thoughts. We're uh, hearing his story. He was talking about a letter that the tenants, his tenants, a dentist, received from the quote-unquote plaintiff uh, describing his, uh, how much he suffers from the uh, violation. So what it was exactly on the letter says? Basically, the uh, lawyer said what we call boilerplate uh, letter, which is a same letter sent to many other people that they are targeting. Mm -hmm. And the letter basically claims in simple uh, short sentences that, that, quote, plaintiff who is a disabled person was barred from using the facilities, the services, mm -hmm. in this case a dentist, has been there four times or sometimes five times and he was not able 
we have an access because of um, architectural barriers. That's the term they use. Architecture failure. Architectural ba failure. Bar uh, yeah, uh, barriers means mm -hmm. he barriers. has difficulties to to be able to park because quote he's a disabled person. Mm -hmm. And for every time that he visited the premises, mm -hmm. he claims that he is entitled based on the law, and this is very important, allowing him to collect about $5,000 for each event. Uh -huh. So if he went there four times, times okay. five will be $20,000. Mm -hmm. oh, I see, I see. And that's what I was, the letter, the demand letter was all that about. That was the letter that your tenant, be who's being sued of, now that they sue, they sue, they sue both, right? Yeah, the tenant that was and a, you. That was a demand letter. All right, demand letter. That's three before the lawsuit is being filed. Yeah, let's talk a bit by bit. Let's talk about the legality of or, or logic of the demanding matter, the demanding, demanding letter, right? right? We understand for this case, you always describe how, uh, describe your damage, right? And your damage has to be turned into dollar terms. Right. Yep. So, was that described into uh, uh, details about how much he, this person has uh, been damaged? Well, it's uh, basically um, the dam the letter itself requests money. If you pay, it's a prevent some money, blackmail money, however you want to call it. If you pay this amount, supposedly they will not file a lawsuit. Okay, step by step. I don't see I don't see the damage for such a person. Unable being unable to find a parking spot is quite a norm to everybody, including disabled people, including disabled folks. I well I love you guys, dif disabled people. I have no problem with, but having no parking spot, having difficulties looking for a uh, parking spot is quite a norm. Right, so in that case, there was a, there has been a parking spot, disabled spot for that very person, and he can. Uh, what I see is that he can't prove his damage. Can he? He cannot prove any damage because mm. remember for two reasons. Mm. One is, in my case, we have a lot, a lot of parking that was available at all times. Okay. There was never an issue mm. that even one the parking is full. Mm. Number two. Mm. He did not even get off his car to go to try to use the services. Uh -huh. That's another thing. The um, problem that they are using is the law is the wrong law. Mm. It's allowing these people to yeah. really sue us exactly. and use exactly. the technicalities exactly. to a high degree. We'll get to that part later, all right? And let's talk about this very person, still talking about the spot, all right? You were saying that per finding, I mean, they're five thousand dollars per finding, yeah. right? If uh, 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 if uh, the visit, if he paid for a visit, that's twenty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And the f of the four visit, uh, none of the visit, he uh, stepped down the car, get into the facility to actually ask for service. Am I right? That's correct. All right, very good. So in other words, this person doesn't even belong to the premises. Because he wasn't a pay, he wasn't a uh, wasn't a patient, wasn't a client at all. He was a drive-by. Am I right? Hundred percent correct. Uh, okay. Now, do you or do you not have uh, camera proof or picture proof at a certain time of the day, say eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven, la, 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 all the way till closing time, shows the vacancies of the parking spot? Do you have that to prove no. yourself? We do not have a camera mm -hmm. that uh, was recording or what have so we didn't have cameras that, uh, that were available. But you can put cameras on now. Yeah, I you can put cameras right now. What we did you know, in, in uh, relation to this case, mm -hmm. we checked all the uh, appointment book. Okay. And the appointment uh -huh. book never showed that, and that was actually declared by the dentist. Mm -hmm. when we filed the um, response to the lawsuit. Uh, okay. Furthermore, there was a telephone number that's in a big sign that you can see from 500 feet or so, or uh -huh. more than that, 1,000 feet. You can see the telephone number of the dentist, and he, you can call him in advance 
mm. of you coming to set an appointment. All right, and they will they will reach you in there front of the door. We checked the record, and there was no man, no mm -hmm. way that mm -hmm. they call, they never called. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, uh -huh. he's coming to use dental services about I would say 50 miles away. He's living in uh, Apple Valley, but yet he wants to use a dentist uh, in that's in, in San Bernardino. In San Bernardino. Uh -huh. His mode of operation, after we did some investigation, that he goes on the same day to different areas and he is using an insurance company, wants to use an insurance company, uh -huh. a dentist, and an auto service, a lot of services that he can have five minutes away from him. Uh -huh. Yet he claims he needed to use them and the 50, 50 miles, miles away. away, all the way from... Uh, Apple Valley, uh, Apple Valley to San Bernardino, that's, 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 that's more than 50. That's more than 50 miles. Uh, that's more than 50 yeah, miles. More. More but than 50 miles. The point is, mm -hmm. that's not an, <coughs> excuse me, it's not an honest attempt to use services. It's a fraud. Uh, I would say it sounds like a very fraud. Sounds like a very, very much so, a fraud case. Because number one, this person could have visited anything closer to him, right? And number two, what he does, what he want to do, he can call to schedule an, an appointment, right? And then in the, if, if he is stopped by the inconvenience, he could call and find me a spot. And I want to get in, right? So on and so forth. And yet, for all these evidence, do you have them handy? Um, we, use this line of defense. Mm -hmm. okay? The issue came out later when I realized mm -hmm. that this person claiming to be a disabled, mm -hmm. and I made a personal effort to really drive by and see where does he live. Mm -hmm. Does he have a ramp? If he, does he go on a wheelchair? I didn't know nothing. Ah. And searching the internet, allow me to know more about the person that uh -huh. he's a serial plaintiff for ADA. Ah. So I drove to his place. Uh -huh. I have uh, just did research where he does, uh, what his address. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he, lives in, uh, he was living in a community of um, mobile home community uh -huh. in Apple Valley. All right. His mobile home has stairs, I would say, four stairs of about four feet high. I see. That that's in my opinion was the only access mm -hmm. to his mobile home. All right. No ramp. Mm -hmm. No ramp. No nothing. No Yet nothing. Another mobile home, two mobile homes from him. Somebody who was disabled mm -hmm. allowed built a whole big yes. ramp to get in. Yeah, so he's an that. honest disabled mm -hmm. person. Put all what they need to be able to get. Mm -hmm. To the so he come, house. he can jump uh, onto the staircase, he onto the stair like a rabbit. He can jump on them like a rabbit with no problem. So with what no problem. Oh what man. I did is hire a private investigator. Ah, I you did the right that. thing. Good. I said, let's find out if this person is really a disabled person. Mm -hmm. And we actually took had surveillance of the location. Uh -huh. We put it into the doc uh, court documentation mm. in the trial as well that the detective was able to observe that he's carrying a trash oh. with no assistance of any kind I of see. apparatus. I see. That he is carrying a big dog and walking with it that he calls a service dog. Not, 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 on, not on wheelchair? Not a wheelchair. Not no, on a wheelchair. No handy, no cane, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. The only time that he was observed carrying a can, can is when he had walked to a lawsuit that he filed in uh, Barstow. Ah, you see. And our detective followed him. All right. As soon as he got off the parking lot, he took the cane and started walking, limping uh, to the my court. God. Okay. All right, it sounds like a very, very interesting character. Uh, let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll find more out of this interesting character. Uh, with me today is my good friend, Zach Hovav. He is un unfortunate, he's a smart man. He sounds, the more he talks, the more he portrays himself as a smart man to me. I believe that he did a lot of homework. 
and he unfortunately is a victim for uh, of a frivolous lawsuits. So let's see how the frivolous lawsuits are created and they are how they are hurting small business. So stay with us. We'll be right back, please. Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audience. Welcome back to the East West Show, Jack Chow with the GNE TV with lots of pride. And I believe my audience like me because uh, we and we try so hard, me and my team try so hard to build up the information tank of you for yourself so that you will be enriched uh, with your information, with the information we provided so that you have a better judgment uh, for things around you, right? So uh, thank you for being my, uh, my client, my uh, audience all the time. And to you, especially to those of you who keep writing emails to me, to do the feedback, give me the feedback. Let me hear how you feel to those of you, and there is a special appreciation for your supporting. And uh, back to the show. With me today is my friend, Zach Hovav, he is unfortunately a victim. He was unfortunately a victim of a frivolous lawsuit, which is so typical, <laughs> so unique, uh, that we would like to find out. The more we, the more we go into the finding, the more hilarious it sounds. I couldn't even help laughing about this person. And uh, you found out uh, while doing your homework with the detective, this person once walk out of the car, going to courtroom, he started walking on a stick, yep. on a can, like like a limp person. And w out of the court, going back into the car, what he did? He still goes, walk slowly, mm. because mm. he's afraid somebody's gonna see him. He didn't mm. know that we are following, that my, our detective was following him. I see. When he came back mm. home, I believe, you know, he walks just as normal as you could imagine. He carries his own trash. He carries he walks his own dog. Trash. Right. Correct. I see. And he so carries boxes, large boxes I see. from his house to uh, his truck. How old is the person? Uh, how old? I would say. He's a man or woman? He's a man. He's man a tall, man. looks very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, could be sound like an Olympic. Oh yeah, he can, <laughs> he can fold me in half when he's still gonna be, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm a small guy. He can beat you, you know. twice, right? Oh yeah. Okay, all right. But so now, now you have the proof, the finding with your detective, right, private detective, and you have the uh, schedule book for all the appointment to indicate how many clients, how many patients the dentist will have in the average, on the average, in the average day. And then you have pictures of the premises showing how many vacancies, uh, as well as the, uh, I mean, as long as the parking spot are concerned. So did you fight? Yeah, I, one of the reasons that I did fight, even so I was told not to fight because it's cheaper to just pay the blackmail ransom money. Mm, which is uh, 20,000. There were four thousand dollars, I think, was the amount back in uh, two thousand eleven. Mm -hmm. If you surrendered right away, or if you take, you take, if you go to court, he's there. They was they were claiming twenty thousand dollars in 20, damages 000, okay. plus attorney fees and mm -hmm. what have you. And oh, one plus point, attorney fees. Plus attorney fees. Well, I mentioned attorney fees. Mm -hmm. This is the most ridiculous, unbelievable part of the law. Oh, this it's is somebody sick. who is, mm -hmm. a, uh, I would say, a plaintiff, quote, disabled plaintiff. Mm -hmm. If he files a lawsuit, an ADA lawsuit, against an owner, an, uh, an owner like myself or a business person, if I, if he wins the lawsuit, and he is entitled, according to the law, to get attorney fees, mm -hmm. reimbursed for attorney fees. Uh -huh. Yet, if the defendant, who is a poor small operator there, that put all his life to defend something that he didn't do even wrong, mm -hmm. if he loses, if he wins the case, 
then the court will not award attorney fees. Ah, uh -huh, that's unfair. It's an unbelievable, okay. but that's a case. There's another unfair part, which we will we'll touch later, right? So for this person who sounds like an Olympic to me, athlete to me, I believe uh, you can go even further to find out he is a uh, uh, fraud in getting his uh, disabled plaque, which is that you have to apply, yeah. you have to be identified for your condition, something like that. I believe this person lied in the first place. Yeah. For that, you can sue him for, for fraud, for, for a fraudulent case. Well, getting the um, DMV decal, disabled decal, mm -hmm. it's one thing that he received, and that was his main defense in terms of disability. Mm -hmm. I have it, mm -hmm. then I'm a disabled, period. All right. The court and the appeal court mm -hmm. disagree with his attorney, and that's how we won the All case. Right. Okay. That just the fact that you have the decal does not entitle you to be considered disabled person for ADA requirements. Okay, in other words, I have lots of uh, professionals supporting me with this show. Every time when I have a question, I invite them to come here to, uh, uh, number one, explain to me, number two, as an education to my audiences. That I will reserve for next time when I have my attorney friends come here, let him give the answer or explanation about how much a violation that is. All right, how about yeah. that? Now, back to the point, when you were offered at the uh, settlement, say either 20,000 or 4,000, 4, or you fight until the very end, you decide to fight. Yeah. All well, right. We received the demand letter. Mm -hmm. Then I, uh, just so we, the audience can understand, mm -hmm. I thought that's a blackmail. So mm -hmm. I called the That's a blackmail. I called the district attorney. I uh -huh. said, this is a scam. Mm -hmm. You need to be aware of it. I got a received, uh, my tenant received a letter demanding a payment of $4,000 by so-called disabled person uh, plaintiff. Mm -hmm. And the word I got, no, 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 Mr. Hoval, this is not, this is something that's been done and it's not in the category of criminal this is a civil issue, mm -hmm. and you got to hire yourself a lawyer if you want to defend uh, yourself. Uh, private attorney. So I decided either I had to decide whether give in to a ransom, mm -hmm. pay him $4,000, mm -hmm. or fight something that I think is wrong. Uh -huh. And I'm being stubborn. I decided to fight no matter what's the cost. Very At good. At all costs, even it took many years to really go through a lot, a lot I of see. hardship. Okay. How long did it take for you to win the case? Did you win? Yes. You won? It's, uh, we had about four years or more. It's just like we started, we got sued in uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. And I think the end of 2015, um, it's about four years, I think. Uh, four years. To get the lawsuit uh, mm -hmm. uh, decided by the local, by the Super, um, Superior Court in San Bernardino. Uh huh. Did you you went to court actually? Yeah, we went to court, and but we did more than that. This is something that the audience should know. Or people uh -huh. that in businesses. Okay. Because I decided to fight till the end. You are a brief man. Thank you. All right. You. Good. Uh huh. I basically decided that we should find out more cases by the same plaintiff. Mm -hmm. My attorneys literally work tirelessly, day and night, out of I see. need to really mm -hmm. fight people mm -hmm. that are dishonest and put down those people, you know, hopefully in jail. To crash and his uh, credibility. That they spend a lot of times, and what we did is we joined with other cases, and we consolidated about uh, eight to nine defendants mm -hmm. on different cases. All right. Now we have more than one attorney. So we have a lead attorney. I see. My attorney was really handling all the lawsuits. Mm -hmm. And when we went to trial, we did not even. You went e to trial. Yeah. You even went to trial. For now, a parking spot case, you went to trial. Believe it or not, as, as, as an unbelievable situation to think that it would go from a 
parking lot is faded. I know. To going to a lawsuit. To, to a parking yourself. lot dispute all the way to jury to, to court. A, to a trial without, we, we, we elected no jury, mm -hmm. but nonetheless it can go with a jury. But you put a lot of financial resources and stress. Yes, of because course. Because of a parking lot that is faded and because of a person can climb his stairs in his mobile home with no problems. Carrying his trash carrying and his walking trash. his dog. Uh, correct. Yeah, uh, and sounds like an Olympic cannon. athlete to me. Capable. Mm -hmm. He's running with his dog. He has a dog. In a uh, he's running with his dog. Competing in the show. Yes. We mm -hmm. documented him running with a, via video. Aha. Uh -huh. In a dog show. That's good. All Yet right. he is disabled. He, he runs with his dog in the dog show. Yeah. You document it by providing a video to the juror, that and the jurors about, bought it. We had our investigator basically followed him even all the way to Florida, where uh, we were thinking there is oh my a show God. he didn't show you, them. You really bet. You bet heavy. <laughs> we, we went all the way. <laughs> you bet we heavily. All right. We caught him in, I think, in Orange mm. County in a dog show. Mm. We were able to show via video that he walked at this, and he admitted uh -huh. that he was able to park in no, uh, in, in a spot which is not a disabled spot, mm -hmm. and walked about mm. 70 feet uh -huh. without cane, okay. with his dog, uh -huh. to the ground, uh, to the To show the dog ground. show. Mm -hmm. we, we documented him running. Oh, he's with his running. Dog he was running the with the dog. And yeah, that's right. the person that claims mm. he couldn't find an adequate okay, parking. Now. When it went to 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 jury court, right? Uh, we went so did, we did it uh, without jury, but it's it's a judicial but you court. Pro yeah, you provided those evidences, right, to the judicial system to the supreme. Yeah, that's correct. The superior right. court judge, uh, we put fr uh, up front all the evidence mm -hmm. and the work of the detective. We yeah. have the detective and the testify. And the jury court bought it. Say hey, no more court, no more court, and you won. Something we won. Like that? We won basically on the fact that the judge agreed with us that this person is not qualified to be a disabled person under the D ADA regulation, mm -hmm. regardless of all other defenses that we have. I see. So we had a what's so called a pretrial on the basis. Is this person disabled or not mm -hmm. for ADA purposes? Uh, I see. I and see. once the judge agreed with us that he's not qualified for being is disabled. Is the case aside from a case? That's aside, without going uh, to the technicalities see, of the I case uh, and, the, and the evaluation. And, and then the, they dismiss the case. And then the judge wrote in our so favor. What, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. his attorney, knowing that he's going to lose his livelihood quote mm. of uh, milking yeah. people and uh, yeah, intimidating sure, people, mm. losing his lucrative business quote. Mm, lucrative business, yes. Uh, appealed it. That's appealed what he does it. in all cases. Uh -huh. the, he's probably doing it because he knows the more lawsuits, the more you money he, he does, doing now? intimidate the plaintiff, uh, the, the defendants, which is me and others, mm. and they may give up and try to settle. I refuse to settle refuse to make an offer for settlement until we get to court. Let's go to court. Let's so go to court. Let's so nail these persons. These we bad nailed guys. him in the, in the mm. superior court. He appealed it to All appeal right. court. Right. Very good. Okay. My dear friends, uh, we are talking about a, a, a fighter, a warrior here, uh, Mr. Zach Hovav. He is a small business owner, but he's a big man to me because he has the gut to stand for what he believes is right and the fight till the very end. He is there is still determined to do so until it brings justice under the sunshine. All right, so let's take another short moment now. When we come back, we put some money together. Let's see the cause of uh, the cost of uh, such a tedious case, right? Such a hilarious case, right? Stay with us, please.
Hello, my lovely audience, and my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show.、Uh, today, I have a great man visiting the studio. Name is Zach Hovav. Mr. Zach Hovav is a small business owner. He runs some property、uh, on the premises. There was a dentist who was sued for "quote unquote" for not uh, providing uh, handicapped parking, and for which reason he, as the operator owner of the business, got sued too. And instead of capitulating, <laughs> he just decided. To fight, and、uh, he is, was so determined to to fight till the end,、uh, won the case, and the attorney appealed the case, and is still going into the war, continue fighting. So now, like I said, we want to see some、uh, dollars, right? So in dollar terms, what has been your cost so far to fight for this frivolous case? Well, the cost. Would have been a lot, a lot higher. My attorneys, you know, the attorneys involved, shared some of the cost because we had、mm. the consolidated cases.、Uh, cost a lawsuit like that is about eighty thousand dollars. Uh huh. Huge amount. The、uh, my personal attorney,、mm -hmm. her name is Lisa Salisbury. She did a marvelous job、uh -huh. and an unbelievable job because she believed. In fighting people who are dishonest, including the lawyers,、mm -hmm. we went as far as effort to disbar this attorney.、Ah. We feel he is abusing the law,、mm. maybe abusing the bar code of ethics,、mm. because all what he's trying to do is milk. The poor businesses、mm -hmm. to a point that they can go to broke, milk the system for money. For money, so、mm -hmm. he can go ahead and all travel、right. all over the world okay, or whatever、good. he does. I know, I know. Okay.、Uh, by the way, I may insert one invitation. You probably want to bring Lisa, your attorney, sometime on the show later to talk about it. To、uh, to to namely educate our audiences. Number one, this is it is wrong to do so. Number two, if you are being hit. Like Mr. Zach Hovav was, so there's always good attorneys available. Yes. So go ask for help with this through these good attorneys. So we'll check on about that, and you will let me know if she can accept my invitation. All right. So now, back to I know the、uh, the whole thing. I know how. This is getting emotional, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this、uh, is getting very emotional, right? It's, it's so believe it or not, I'm、mm -hmm. a tough person. You lost. Yeah. Go ahead. But. Uh, when I talk about the emotional stress,、mm -hmm. that gets me,、uh, I'll say, uncomfortable, very nervous, because nobody wants to be involved in a lawsuit that is not just,、mm -hmm. because you don't know how it's going to end, you don't know how much resources you have. Lawyers normally charge hundreds of、mm -hmm. dollars an hour, a lot of research,、mm -hmm. a lot of other costs, and you can be simply. Correct, you're gonna be win the lawsuit,、mm. but you're gonna go bankrupt. That's the risk you take. You're right, you're right, you're right. And you're I right. decided to take all this emotional stress,、mm. no matter what, as long as justice prevails. And thanks God, this is one of the That's cases where justice prevails. That's why I call you a fighter, a warrior. You have the guts to stand for what's right.、Uh, most of folks do not because they have worry about their pocket, right? That 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 doesn't mean you're ne doesn't necessarily mean you're rich enough to do so, but you have the guts enough guts to do so, right? So now,、uh, putting all the costs, your、uh, attorney fees, right, and your、uh, private detect detective fees, yes, right, and everything, your time, efforts, and stress, everything, eighty thousand dollars was your total cost. Yeah, that's about about eighty thousand. You know, that's the total cost.、Mm -hmm. Uh, the actual charges are a lot more than that, because so the、um, my attorney and the other attorney、um, basically did not charge on a lot of the work they've done. Yeah, Same yeah, okay. thing with the private detective, which is, was an excellent、mm -hmm. um, that uh, basically uh,、mm -hmm. did not bill for all the work she's done.、Uh -huh. She was, you know,、okay. just minimum per、mm -hmm. se. Uh, the emotional stress 
Mm. That's a whole different issue. Because yeah. of emotional stress, mm. you are not attending to your business. Yes, yes. You cannot mm. get more work, mm. do more mm. of uh, yes, property yes, management yes. or whatever things you need to do because mm. your mind is focused. Yeah, of course. And I have to focus on winning the lawsuits mm. and whatever mm. it takes. So I actually lost being in the real estate, lo lost a lot, a lot of money that I couldn't do any business because my mind was not there. Yeah, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Emotional stress mm -hmm. with the spouse. Yeah, She's afraid yeah, right. of losses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I was under emotional stress that my mm -hmm. tenant will leave me mm -hmm. and w go somewhere else because right. he doesn't want to be involved in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that's why I told him that stay with me as a tenant because I could be vacant for a long, long time. And I paid his attorney fees. In other words, I protected him as well without him spending right, a penny okay. for legal. Oh my God, oh my God. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt the right thing it's to really do. Hurt. To it's really hurt. It costs you arms and legs. Yeah, my yeah. doctor, Dr. Kim, uh, is one of the nicest, nicest people that really, mm -hmm. just as soon as he got the letters and the lawsuit, he was nervous. Mm -hmm. So I told him, do not worry about it. I'm handling it. You're out. You don't worry emotion. about it. You got a strong I man do. protecting you. Good. All right, good. All right. Okay, now, a while ago, you just mentioned one huge point, which I really want to, uh, to make it clear to my audiences that, you know, the system, if the plaintiff wins, right, he gets paid, gets awarded with the attorney fees, That's right? That's correct. Now, if defendant wins, in your case, the defendant won the case, you are not awarded for your attorney fees? That's correct. That's correct. So now, putting all these together, you will find out some definitions of our system. Number one, the system does not encourage good people, such as defendant, to protect, to protect themselves. Because once they lose, they have to cover their own attorney fees. Now. There are better rules. Other countries, other systems, they they make a loser pay. Loser pays everything. How about that? So there's something California doesn't copy. That means the system fails to support good guys, support good deeds, and the system supports evil. Number one. Number two, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Maybe I go for uh, too 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 much further. Number two. This whole thing, the plaintiff, was created by the system. Should there be, should there not be the law of that, of such? That wouldn't be, even be the case. Am well, I right? You're right to a large extent. The problem is very fundamental. Mm -hmm. We are not, the laws are not protecting the business, the small business no. owners. They are for the big uh, lawyers. In interest group. To the interest group mm -hmm. that will file lawsuits, even so it's frivolous. We all know that. Judges know that. Mm -hmm. But they are going by the law. All and right. they use all this system of laws that we have that is, I would have said, I don't want to use corrupt, but it's ridiculous and really hurting us big time because they know there is millions and millions of dollars that are being spent on settlement on lawsuits, mm -hmm. fighting lawsuits, and who makes the money? The lawyers. That's Not why even the plaintiff. That's why it is called a lucrative business. That's exactly. All right. Okay. And and, mm -hmm. and that's a, an opening. The law, the way it's written, okay. is an opening for crook lawyers to mm -hmm. make millions of dollars on the back and of And it's a small an open state. wound to California economy. We are bleeding, not only bleeding, we're bleeding a lot. Right. Small businesses are being scared. Small businesses are running away from California. They are either being sued they are, you know, or, or they run bankrupt for fighting, right? such as the almost uh, bankrupt in the case. Now, uh, my lovely audience, I really want you to think, think twice. With a system like this, do you really rely, I mean, do you really rely upon the fact that I have money, I want to do business. You really consider about the legal environment, does it or does it not provide you the conditions of doing business? Now, 
So uh, uh, we're a little over time. I still want to give you about one minute to 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 let you say to call upon you own folks out there who are also business owners who might also be unfortunately sued. What do you, you want to say something to them, please? Yeah, I think business owners, small business owners, should watch for uh, compliance with the ADA, which we all of us wants to have compliance according to the law. The problem is that we have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. The law is very technical, and it's very easy to ignore or, um, and, or um, overlook a technicality. Mm. Therefore, you have to be vigilant at the same time, and that's what a word to the legislator. You should be aware that your laws are done in such way, are phrased in such way, or set in the system in such way that's allowing criminal lawyers, I call them criminal lawyers, right. to use a loophole to destroy businesses right. and financially mm -hmm. destroy them. Mm -hmm. The laws should be such that there is protection against okay. some lawyers. Not mm -hmm. all lawyers are like that. Mm -hmm. Some lawyers mm -hmm. are honest, they will not take cases like that. But some others use them as a lucrative business. Look, go online and do a quick research. You'll mm -hmm. find out there is many lawyers that are dishonest that actually making millions and millions of dollars by filing hundreds. I understand, very hundreds much. Of All lawsuits. right, very much. Uh, thank and you very much. And the legislators are not putting a stop to it. Thank you very much. And mm. the only the thing we ask for years, and I was in uh, lobbying as that well. That said, yeah, that said, in conclusion, even though what said was being said was a fact, you almost are saying that never concentrate on your business. Always keep a keep 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 it somewhere somehow to be vigilant. You have <laughs> to, to be vigilant. Yourself, right? yeah. What a tragedy. So, uh, my dear audience, we thank you very much for watching, and thank you for your attention. And to my friend Zach, uh, thank you very much for sharing. Thank That's you. good help. Thank you. All freeze, best. freeze for the camera. Good. Thank you.